each artist should be allowed to pursue their artistic endeavor. But I still think there are a lot of stuff that's on today. It's coonery buffoonery. We could do better. We're talking about Tyler Perry at this point. <laughs> no, no, I mean, look. Why the hell would I be worried about a Spike Lee or anybody else? They all can go straight to hell. One critic had said that you were malt liquor for the masses. Are you offended by that? And all the damage that's been done through the imagery throughout the history of television and movies. Black excellence is not only about setting the bar higher for our people, but also setting the right example for our people. Representation of our people throughout society is crucial. The long-standing pivotal factor is the portrayal of African Americans in entertainment and on the big screen. Two men who have been at the center stage of this are Spike Lee and Tyler Perry. Both filmmakers have achieved the ultimate success in Hollywood and over the decades have entertained their loyal fans with film and TV shows that showcase black culture. For two icons who people assume have mutual respect for one another, nobody would have expected them to be involved in a long-running feud that lasted for over a decade. It was a rift that would spark a broader debate around how black culture should be portrayed on screens and created division between African-American audiences. Spike Lee, who was raised in Brooklyn, New York, is known for cinematic classics like Do the Right Thing, School Days, and Malcolm X. Since his inception into the film world, he has made it a point to push limits and develop a distinct filming style. We have to try to expand the scope of the type of black films that are being made because it seems to be in two genres, basically, where you have the, the comedy or, you know, the b-boy drug dealer, shoot him up mm. action. You know, so. His first film, She's Gotta Have It, was self-financed for $175,000, a remarkable accomplishment for the time. The black and white comedy drama served as a catalyst for Spike Lee to go on to tell more impactful stories and gave strength to an independent mode of production that had never been seen within black cinema. Tyler Perry, who was born and raised in New Orleans, started off in theater. His first play, I Know I've Been Changed, opened to empty seats where he would have to sell popcorn to compensate for the loss he eventually started touring all over the country to sell out audiences. 13 years later, he released his first film, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, which triggered his Madea franchise and set him on the track to owning the largest film studio in the United States and to being the first African American to own a major production studio. Spike Lee joins a complex examinations of life, love, culture, and politics within the African-American community. He has explored race relations and has confronted issues such as colorism and police brutality. They're symbolic masterpieces that aim to drive conversations and uplift the community. The Brooklyn Knight has introduced many talented actors who we are fond of today, giving us memorable first impressions. What's the difference between my character and Hollywood characters? Black people of mine, I feel, are true. And for a lot of times, theirs are false because they know nothing about black people. And, and their ideals about black people have been fostered by the, the ah. stereotypes they grew up with watching films. Perry's films serve to mainly entertain by portraying black families in a comedic way. I don't know why the hell I let you live in my house. Because you can't afford to stay here by your damn self. Perry is best known for his Madea franchise in which the mogul himself dresses as an elderly, gun-toting black lady. His films rely heavily on popular caricatures of black characters behaving in an outlandish manner, which end with a positive life lesson for people to take away. These two opposite ways of representing the community are exactly where both of their differences collided. Differences that would lead to verbal blows in 2009. 
when the notably outspoken Lee criticized Perry's work for being coonery and buffoonery. Each artist should be allowed to pursue the artistic endeavor. But I still think there a lot of stuff that's on today is coonery and buffoonery. And I know it's making a lot of money. We could do better. We're talking about Tyler Perry at this point. <laughs> no, no, I mean, look. He was claiming that Tyler's films were setting black America back in progress and put him on blast for making content he knew would receive high ratings despite the damage that it could cause for the community. These are Negroes we are talking about, not some lab mice in a cage. We are not one monolithic group of people. We do not all think, look, and act alike, Ms. Goldfarb. Curry fired back at the filmmaker during a 60 Minutes interview. I can tell. Yeah, it's so insulting. It's attitudes like that that make Hollywood think that these people do not exist, and that's why there's no material speaking to them, speaking to us. You know, that pisses me off. It really does. Over the next 10 years, the two cultural icons would go back and forth, sending shots at each other over interviews and various other media sources. And all the damage has been done through the imagery throughout the history of television and movies. It's only black people that do this to each other. I have never seen Jewish people complaining about Seinfeld. I've never seen Italian people complaining about The Sopranos. It's only us as Negroes that do this to each other. I never, ever, ever said, I'm speaking on behalf of 45 million African Americans. This is my opinion and my opinion alone. I'm gonna punch the hell out of you, say something else. That is my answer to Spike Lee, go to hell. Why the hell would I be worried about a Spike Lee or anybody else? They all can go straight to hell. Everything I need to say about Tyler Perry has been said. The man's a brilliant businessman. God bless him. What do you mean by God bless him? May God bless him. He told me go to hell, I say God bless him. This created a divide within African American film goers. It created a debate around who was the most righteous out of the filmmakers and whose art forms were the most deserving of respect from the community. Lee's work has by no means been free of criticism over the years. The way he has portrayed his characters in the past has been questionable. But it is fair when it comes to Spike's work, at least the positive has often outweighed the negative. And criticism of Perry's work ain't nothing new. Many people have said that the writer-director's movies are filled with stereotypical characters that exploit the black community. One of those critics just happened to be Spike. I, mean, I read something the other day. One critic had said that you were malt liquor for the masses. Are you offended by that? Why would I be upset at, at people who don't get it? And when I tell you I have these messages by the millions mm -hmm. from people of how my movies and work have spoken to them or their family, so the ones who don't get it are not as important to me as the ones who do. On the flip side, Others have claimed that Spike is just a hater and is bitter of Perry's success. He has been known to go at other directors in the past, like Quentin Tarantino and Clint Eastwood. So it is easy to see how this claim could hold some weight. Some of the resentment might stem from how Perry has received funding so easy to create movies that in Spike's eyes are tasteless and like substance. Anything Perry attaches his name to seems to automatically be given the go-ahead position which the Jungle Fever director has never found himself in. On one project, he even resorted to starting a Kickstarter campaign to appeal to his loyal audience for financial backing, something that the Medea creator wouldn't even have to think about doing. You've no, got no, a lot I, of money. I, you I, don't need to do this. All, Why would all, you go all, to Kickstarter? First I all, think it's interesting. First of all, first of all, you don't know how much money I have. You've never seen me before. You've never seen me before in your life. I've been doing Kickstarter before there was Kickstarter. That's how I raised the money for my first one. She's going to have it. The whole Hollywood game has changed. Now studios only want to make tentpole films that can open on the same day globally and make trillions of dollars. One thing Perry does have is an amazing business model. People can say what they want about the billionaire's quality of his films, but he clearly knows what his audience wants and delivers it. At the same time, 
Spike Lee has always been mindful of telling the right stories in the right way and less concerned with turning over crazy profits at the box office. There's still a limit to how much money they're going to spend on a black film. If Eddie Murphy's not in it, there's a, there's a limit on how many theaters they're going to put it in. There's a limit on how much they're going to spend on prints and advertising. Mm -hmm. I told Warner Brothers from the get-go that this film had to be an epic. There's no way Malcolm X could be a two-hour film. The subject matter demanded that. There's no way that we wanted to, to skimp or to compromise, you know, something, the magnitude of the story. Uh, we took, Denzel took a huge cut. I took a huge cut, but we just, you know, we took my salaries here, but we wanted to get, to get this film made. Does Tyler Perry's money-making machine mean his work should be free from being scrutinized? And does it mean no one has the right to check him for the messages and representation he puts out into the world? A line of defense that Perry shoots at his critics is that he makes art for black folks to enjoy and speaks black folks' language. Let me tell you what Medea Brown, all these characters are, are bait. Disarming, charming, make you laugh, bait. So I could slap Medea in something and talk about God, love, faith, forgiveness, family, any of those things. Lee wasn't going to give him a pass for that, and his comments led them into a 10-year feud. Of course our stories would be different. Doesn't mean that one is less important than the other. They're just different stories. Yeah. It wasn't until 2019 that the pair looked like they finally settled their differences, when Lee surprisingly appeared on the red carpet of the grand opening ceremony of Tyler Perry's studio in Atlanta. Well, I'm glad to be here. It's an honor. This historic night. This is, this is a historic night in, in cinema. You speak so much about black excellence. And this man has gone from being homeless. This man has gone from seeing his mother hit. He was sexually abused. He's gone through so much. This American dream. This American dream. It was Lee paying respect to Perry's remarkable feat of now owning the largest production studio in the country and being the first African American to do so. Lee reportedly reached out to Perry after he saw the media moguls interviewing Oprah. He then went over to Tyler's home, and they both hashed out their differences. Both of them getting back on good terms was a joyous moment, as a lot of people thought these legends may never see eye to eye again. The both of them made it crystal clear that this feud was over when Tyler named one of his 12 purpose-built sound stages after Spike Lee himself, paying homage to a fellow director who paved the way for people like him. Regardless of any issue they might have had in the past, Tyler later stated that out of all the criticism he received in his career, it was Spikes that stung the most, as he was always someone he admired. Yeah, we're mad cool now. Yeah, you're mad cool. Yeah. My criticism of him was, was just the imagery. For me, it was just taste. He has a way to, say, to see stuff. I see it differently. He's doing a great thing. We got no drama no friction, and one day we might work together. These two cultural giants went from feuding to now being back on common grounds. One trailblazer critique and another turned into a cultural debate on race and representation on how black stories should be told. People can only imagine what these guys could have achieved together if they never had their quarrel. Despite their differences and what people might think of them and their work, both of them are certified film legends in their own right and have opened the doors for many by telling black stories. Spike and Perry deserve their flowers and respect, and they now have the chance to heal old wounds and make up for lost time. And maybe we can have a collaboration between the two of them in the near future.